Oops. Good morning. Oh, we're recording. Good morning. Hello, Good morning, family. Sis. Welcome back. Hi. Hi, everyone. Today's lesson is uh, we're on lesson 124 entitled Let Me Remember I Am One with God. Are you going to read today? Um, uh, sorry, I'm a bit slow. <laughs> Am I reading? Do you, would you uh, like to read? Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to listen to Holy Spirit. <laughs> Get a nudge. Am I to read or not? What am I? Um, sure, I'll read. Yeah. Thank you. Let me remember I am one with God. Mm. Today we will again give thanks for our identity in God. Our home is safe, protection guaranteed in all we do, power and strength available to us in all our undertakings. That's a big statement. <laughs> the ego doesn't want to take this in. Our home is safe. Protection guaranteed in all we do, power and strength available to us in all our undertakings. Mm. How incredible is that? But do we realise it? Or do we, through the ego, take false responsibility and think mm -hmm. we need to do all of these things apart from God, apart from Holy Spirit, right? Okay. He keeps, he, I'll keep going. We can fail in nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything we touch takes on a shining light that blesses and that heals. At one with God and with the universe, we go our way rejoicing with the thought that God himself goes everywhere with us. He goes everywhere with us. Boy, that is what does that feel like, sis? Yeah, it's just this invincibility, invulnerability, like bulletproof, safety, no threat. Just having the superpower within you is <laughs> like... <laughs> Nothing, nothing will prevail against you while you walk with God, with you, when you affirm and allow his presence to be the, the front of everything that you're doing, the reason. Yeah. So he's also saying there that our identity is in him. That's right. It cannot be human as well, can it? No. The body, yeah. It's like when we prioritize our identity in God, everything else comes into that vertical alignment. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep reading. How holy are our minds? Remembering that the word holy uh, at its core here while we're in the dream is the necessary acceptance of our incorruptible innocence. And that incorruptible innocence is not made whole within us until we include everyone else as well in that incorruptible innocence, yeah? So how holy are our minds? And everything we see reflects the holiness within the mind at one with God and with itself. How easily do errors disappear and death give place to everlasting life. Our shining footprints point the way to truth, for God is our companion as we walk the world a little while. And those who come to follow us will recognize the way because the light we carry stays behind, yet still remains with us as we walk on. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. <sighs> what we receive is our eternal gift to those who follow after and to those who went before or stayed with us a while. And God, who loves us with the equal love in which we were created, smiles on us 
and offers us the happiness we gave. Today, we will not doubt his love for us, nor question his protection and his care. No meaningless anxieties can come between our faith and our awareness of his presence. We are one with him today in recognition and remembrance. We feel him in our hearts. Our minds contain his thoughts. Our eyes behold his loveliness in all we look upon. Today, we see only the loving and the lovable. Can we just stay there for the next yeah. 150 years? Right. Kidding. That's really right. accepting the atonement. This is isn't it? When we when we're when we're mindfully present with this and when we we really um, anchor it within, breathing it within, mm -hmm. you can feel the peace that peace that kind of ripples from within outward, right? Yes. And that description really gives you that feeling state of what follows when all we do is forgive and then rest. And this is what's restored to us, the memory of our oneness with God, the acceptance of atonement. And, you know, this accept and receive is not an efforting. It's an allowance. It's what happens naturally when we stop blocking the truth and just affirm, yes, let me remember I am one with God. God is my creator. God is all there is to me. I'm allowing my mind to be with God, letting God's thoughts be only my thoughts. Yeah. I love that we feel him in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Today we see only the loving and the lovable because that's how God sees. So in really anchoring that within, mm. you can feel it. We, we are the will of God, right? Yes. The loving expression of his loving will. I'll keep reading. We see it, right? Mm -hmm. That's that beautiful peace. As the will of God, let me remember I am one with God. We see it, that oneness in God, in appearances of pain. And pain gives way to peace. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. There's that promise that there is something else to see there. Thank you. Right. So yeah. who are we looking with? If we want to see pain as proof of separation, we'll, we'll be looking through physical sense and the ego will be judging what it sees. But, the, you know, there's a choice there to look beyond those appearances and to not defy or argue or contradict in through arrogance what God is declaring that, you know, it's, it's restoring. It's giving back to God his creation as it really is. So instead of pain... There is something real to see. God is not the author of pain. So what is God authorizing right there? It's always going to be its opposite. Health, perfection, wholeness, joy, peace. Yeah. We've got to want that, though. Yes. We've got to want to see that. That's joining with, with God's Spirit. will, in God's will. Mm -hmm. We've got to see what's really there. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So let me remember I am one with God, just as a reminder. That's the lesson. We see it in the frantic, in the sad and the distressed, the lonely and the afraid and afraid who are restored to the tranquility and peace of mind in which they were created. And we see it in the dying and the dead as well, restoring them to life. All this we see because we saw it first within ourselves. That's just profound. So as I anchor that within myself, right, let me, let me remember that I am one with God. Mm -hmm. As I anchor that, 
and then bring people who still believe their suffering into that sacred space in my heart, in my mind, they're healed because I've accepted that healing for myself. Mm -hmm. We can't ever accept healing for ourselves alone. No. Healing through God is inclusive, not exclusive. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. When we accept please. atonement, yeah. When we accept yeah. atonement with God, it's with all of creation and with every brother. That's what we're accepting our at one with. So it's never a private affair. Thank you. That took me nearly 30 years to... Um, 50. <laughs> I get it real quick after a while, right? Yeah. I forgive myself. <laughs> okay, next paragraph. No miracle can ever be denied to those who know that they are one with God. Mm. Wow, no miracle, even the surmounting of this belief in death. Well, especially if we read what he says in the Obstacles to Peace in the text, chapter 19, he says the last, the last, uh, or the greatest, um, obstacle, the greatest illusion, which is death, can be the first to overcome, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Only the ego's judgments and hierarchy of illusions say that that's the, the greatest and the most difficult. But, you know, when we're claiming our at one with God, who is life with a capital L, eternal life without opposite, that's logical. Of course, knowing that we are one with God, who is eternal life, we are eternal life. Our life is eternal. And knowing that is mastery over the symbol of this body that's in our mind. You know, this isn't our life, but it's how we seem to be living here in the dream. And it, we, you know, bring it under our laws when we accept atonement with that eternal life that God is. And you know, we're just placing ourselves under the law of eternal life as when we accept, I am at one with God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a deeply felt state. Mm. You know, and you can feel the innocence, I mean, our innocence, we, which is exactly how, as we were created by God, right? Yeah. Mm. Mm. And that's the uh, immunity to all of the ego's illusory phenomena that we made initially in separation to attack ourselves. Yes. Right? The closing of the gap. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Awesome. Shall I keep reading? Yes. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> no miracle can ever be denied to those who know that they are one with God. No thought of theirs, but has the power to heal all forms of suffering in anyone. In Tom, times gone by and times as yet to come as easily as in the ones who walk beside them now. Can we unpack that? We'll take that last sentence too. <laughs> oh, their thoughts are timeless. Yeah. And apart from distance as apart from time. Okay. So he is speaking directly here mm -hmm. to the illusion of all the dimensions of time. Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. because apparently we've been around in the dream for millions if not billions of illusory years right you know cycling mm -hmm. through incarnations the body because remember that the body is a central idol along with physical death mm -hmm. been doing this for a long long time <laughs> yes so He's saying that when we truly claim, let me remember I am one with God, when we truly do, we're healing all of, well, we're, we're healing all of it right throughout all the dimensions of time. Yeah, because... It, one, it, go on, you, you speak, sis. Well, this, 
this gap is predicated on this line here. And this is the timeline, right? There has to be a way for this body to seem to come into the dream. Accepting atonement, right? That's the forgiveness. We're forgiving it. And we're accepting that only this is true. So what happens to space and time, you know, in the forgiveness process, it collapses the entire thought of time and it brings us into the eternal now. And so we are one with God, one with every brother, only our belief in time seems to place our brothers in the past, those that walk with us now, and those that have yet to be born. So this is really taking the lid off and just seeing what is, you know, what's the truth absent, you know, this belief in the gap. So our healed mind touches everything in that holy instant. Time, to, it's, time's not a law in the mind of God. Time doesn't exist in the mind of God. So while we're one with God and having that mind in us, the Christ, um, it's, it's totally outside of the realm of time. So it heals and, and touches all of creation. I don't know if I said that right, but I, I get it. <laughs> there is no the past, present, and future when we're outside of time. And when we're one with God, time isn't. Beautiful. Yeah. It's great to wrap our mind around that, right? Yeah, to really, we have access to to every brother in the dream. I mean, just yeah, there's there's no place that we're not <laughs> that our thoughts aren't reaching. Mm. So, you know, Jesus does say in the course two, communication remains unbroken. Mm -hmm. mm, you know, even though perhaps maybe the body has been destroyed, mm -hmm. seemingly, you know, death. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, I'll keep reading. Mm. <sighs> we join in this awareness as we say that we are one with God. For in these words, we say as well that we are saved and healed. That we save whoops, and heal accordingly. That we that can we say, save. Oh, sorry, that we can save mm -hmm. and heal accordingly. We have accepted and we now would give. For we would keep the gifts our Father gave, right, by giving them away. That's the only way we can keep them, okay. is by sharing them. Yeah. Um, today we would experience ourselves. No, where am I? Am I, is that That's right? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. Today we would experience ourselves at one with him so that the world may share our recognition of reality. There's the one mind. That's it. That's the light that just blasts right through mm -hmm. all the darkness. Yeah. In our experience, the world is freed. As we deny our separation from our Father, it is healed along with us. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Celebration! Yeah. What a beautiful lesson on the um, effect of accepting the atonement. We spend so much time on forgiveness and how the ego works, and this is just beautiful. Just talking about as we accept, this is what naturally occurs. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, falling off my chair here. <laughs> ah, whew, where'd Nook go? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Here we go. Okay. Um, next paragraph. Peace be to you today. Secure your peace by practicing awareness you are one with your creator as he is with you. Sometime today, whenever it seems best, devote a half an hour to the thought that you are one with God. Mm, that's 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Right. 30 minutes mm -hmm. to spend with God. Mm. Do you reckon you could handle it? Yes. <laughs> 30 minutes in exchange for everything. <laughs> oh. Well, that'll collapse a million years in the illusion of time, right? Um, 
This is our first attempt at an extended period for which we give no rules, no special words to guide your meditation. We will trust God's voice to speak as he sees fit today. Certain he will not fail. Abide with him this half an hour. He will do the rest. Okay, so while I was reading that, I, mm. I heard a voice. <laughs> so, um, and this is, I'd like to share this with you. Please. Right? Uh, just to remind you, uh, don't judge the way you'll receive God. Don't, sorry, don't limit it, mm. how you receive it. Yeah. I think probably for the most part, um, you may receive it as thoughts, mm -hmm. right? As thoughts, the thoughts of God. Mm -hmm. And you'll recognize that because they, they do not resemble your own thoughts <laughs> at all. Yeah. They just don't, you know. And when that happens, and I'm sure you've had that experience, mm -hmm. Um, stay with it open even deeper wider to receive even more of his thoughts mm -hmm. okay. because I found from my own experience that to the degree I recognize his thoughts and have immediate gratitude for them seems to be the same extent that I receive even more of them mm -hmm. so yeah like yeah. I mean, his thoughts. Yeah. Do you want to add something to that, sis? Well, it reminds me of the lesson he gave me on, you know, receiving um, abundance. You know, when we try to limit how he uh, gives to us, but we say it's only limited to this paycheck. You know, God's like, I have these unlimited, exhaustless resources to give to you, but you keep saying that the only way that I can reach you is through this paper paycheck or a deposit every other week from an employer. You know, it's like take all all of our thoughts and beliefs, all the ways that we outline how God's going to reach us really just limits everything. You know, God is infinite and God can just reach you. Can can the bee and the bird, you know, can a small child or a song or a sermon or, you know, the thought that comes in while you're brushing your teeth or driving. These are all the ways that he can reach you through a friend um, so yeah, just no limits on how God's going to bless you and, uh, speak to you and guide you, direct you just to be open, right? Take all our prejudices and opinions off. Like I have no idea, but I'm open to receiving. So I agree. And another thing that may be helpful, uh, for me in my practice is, especially when the ego is bombarding me, you know, coming in to try and distract me from presence with God, um, yeah. is, is to use a tool, a tool that works for you, mm -hmm. like um, something like a mantra. Mm -hmm. you know, mine at present, and I've spoken about this before, mm -hmm. is, is the one that takes me into immediate the immediate experience of uh, my incorruptible innocence, my holiness. And in that state, well, God can give me his thoughts. Sometimes I hear a voice and amazing ahas and insights, etc. right? Right. And um, that one is uh, I accept myself as only God created me, all yeah. right? Yeah. That's, that's it. Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah, yeah so hurts, I, i'm immediately saying those aren't my thoughts now i'm, I'm in that practice of that's not me that's not oh, these don't originate for me these aren't my thoughts and if they're not god's thoughts they're not thoughts at all so real quick it's like that's not me and then quickly replace it with but i accept myself right only as god created me yeah yeah, yeah. that's it sis making the diligent well the, it's a diligent practice, mm -hmm. yeah. positive separation. Right. We don't have to fight with the thoughts of the ego. No. We just, just say no to it. Yeah. That's not me. Right. And I want the mm -hmm. thoughts of God. 
Right. Because only those are our true thoughts. Well, the others don't exist. Yeah. Very tempting, very convincing, but they don't exist, right? Yeah. <laughs> only if we believe in them. Yeah. yeah. They okay. So I'll keep reading. Um, and I will introduce the Changeless Innocence Prayer at the end of this lesson. Mm. Uh, just could you remind, remind yeah. me, please? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that might be a tool some some of our beautiful family here may be oh, happy yeah. to use. Yeah. Um, where are we up to? Peace be to you today. Sorry? Uh, mm -hmm. Peace be to you today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. We did do that. We sometime today we're going to spend hour. half an hour. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah about half an hour, thirty minutes <laughs> mm. to the thought that you're on for God. Yeah, this is our better. first attempt. Yeah, mm -hmm. at an extended period for which we give no rules, no special words to guide your meditation. We will trust God's voice to speak as He sees fit today. Certain He will not fail. Abide with Him this half an hour he will do the rest right your benefit will not be less if you believe that nothing happens you may not be ready to accept the game today yet sometime somewhere it will come to you nor will you fail to recognize it when it dawns with certainty upon your mind Mm, I've had that experience. Mm. This half an hour will be framed in gold with every minute like a diamond set around the mirror that this exercise will offer you. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. And you will see Christ's face upon it in reflection of your own. Ooh. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, yeah. Perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow, you will see your own transfiguration. Wow. You will see your own transfiguration in the glass this holy half an hour will hold out to you, meaning in the mirror, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To look upon yourself. Wow, he's really asking us to see, to look upon this mirror mm -hmm. and to see the truth of our being as the Christ, the face of Christ. Wow. And that it's available if it doesn't frighten us. Like when you're ready to see it, you will see it. When you desire to see that and nothing else. Oh, yeah. love it. Wow. Whew. So perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow. No, where am I? Oh, when no. You're ready. Uh, you will remember oh when you're ready mm -hmm. when you are ready you will find it there within your mind and waiting to be found you will remember then the thought to which you gave this half an hour thankfully aware no time was ever better spent mm. i know that feeling too sis you know that right remember yes more and more more oh wow perhaps today perhaps tomorrow you will look into this glass this mirror and understand the sinless light you see belongs to you the loveliness you look on is your own wow count this half hour as your gift to god in certainty that his return will be a sense of love you cannot understand, a joy too deep for you to comprehend, a sight too holy for the body's eyes to see. And yet you can be sure someday, perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow, you will understand and comprehend and see. Add further jewels to the golden frame that holds the mirror offered you today by only repeating to yourself this. Let me remember 
I am one with God, at one with all my brothers and myself in everlasting holiness and peace. Hmm. Beautiful. Let me remember I am one with God. I'm just feeling like, you know, he's always telling us that our brother is, you know, our mirror. What we want to see, you know, is just projected onto our brother. It's like when we see our brother as nothing less than beautiful, we will see that light shining back in us. And in that light, we recognize, hey, that's this light is me, is God, is my brother. It's everything. And we do that through forgiveness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Desiring to see what's really there. You have to forgive first and then say, but I want to see. I want to see the sinlessness and the guiltlessness in my brother, who is my mirror. How I see him is how I see myself. And to see that the light in him is seeing it for myself. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It's just all settling in and becoming very simple. And just, that's all I want to see. Thanks, sis. Thanks for reading that. Beautiful. Great. Well, I, did, I wanted to include a link to the Changeless Innocence Prayer mm -hmm. as well, which is a little prayer. It's not in the course. It's a prayer that Jesus gave me a number of years ago. Um, and I used it almost daily. Uh, it might be helpful for you. So um, it's only a short prayer and um, I will put the link to it in the description box or the show more box on the YouTube station. And yeah. will you also read it for us? Yeah, I'll read it now. Um, as soon as I find it, where is it? Here? <laughs> it is here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, here's the prayer. My problems have been Sorry, here's a prayer. My problems have already been solved because I am guiltless. Only my mistaken guilt can cause the appearance of problems. Guilt is the secret wish for punishment in the forms of conflict, sickness, pain, loss, depression, lack, etc. My problems have already been solved because the single source of them all is reversed once I accept my changeless innocence, my holiness. I only see problems when I forget my incorruptible innocence. As I reclaim my innocence, problems disappear. This is my divine and invincible immunity to all the ego made as a defense against my most holy self. The single cause of all my problems is rejection of my changeless innocence. This is my identity in God. The single solution to all my problems is acceptance of my changeless and incorruptible innocence. This is the atonement. As I breathe deeply into the stillness of my heart, I breathe the life of God. In this holy instant, I give all my fears, grievances and self-judgments to the light of God to be dissolved. In this breath, I soften my resistance and allow his love to unburden me. I open my heart to receive the immediate grace of my unchanged innocence as the totality of my being. As I allow God's grace to breathe through me, I joyfully accept that love is living me now. 
Amen. Amen. That's transformative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you straight into peace. Thank you, sis. And I love the way you read that. I hope the audio, the, the audio will be there, right? It'll take you to the audio link to hear you. Yeah, read it. it's, you'll find um, we've upgraded the blog now on our website. So the link that's down below in the YouTube thing there, um, it's got, it'll take you to a page where it's got the, you can print the prayer out if you want to. Mm -hmm. It's already, it has the audio version. Mm -hmm. And you can also have the, Print. other version what's the other one ebook version on your mobile yeah cell phone yeah yep. yes isn't that good and you can print it out and not get the uh comments section there so yeah yeah multiple, multiple yeah. to have it delivered the way that you best receive it so thanks sis thank you okay. thank you okay that's a long lesson right yeah, that's all right. It, this is, uh, you know, I think this is the most powerful one on the atonement that we've read so far. And I'm just so enthralled by, you know, what he's telling us occurs when we really want this and nothing else and really allow it to really accept it and to receive. Lesson 124, let me remember, I am one with God. Thanks, sis. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. See you tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow morning. Bye. <laughs>